with a brand new story Hi everybody, I'm meteorologist Leslie Hudson reporting from Cocoa Beach, Florida. Thanks for joining us for day two of our hurricane series, The Mean Season. Just a couple of hundred miles south of here is the picturesque Florida Keys. They were decimated in 2017 when Hurricane Irma came calling. Now, the Florida Keys have endured some of the most powerful hurricanes on Earth, including the hurricane of 1935, Hurricane Donna, and Category 5, Hurricane Andrew, when it made a glancing blow. But even almost two years later, many folks in the Middle Keys are still struggling to find their new normal. Hurricane Irma is barreling towards the Caribbean. The strongest hurricane to ever plow into the Leeward Islands. This a nuclear hurricane. I can't even see. That's a real good. So we're going to be dealing with this storm for the next several days. It was a warm Sunday summer morning on September 10th. The tension was palpable. Just about everyone in Florida, especially the Florida Keys, were as prepared as they could be for what Irma would soon unleash. But Hurricane Irma had already left a lethal footprint in the Caribbean. Irma was the most powerful Atlantic hurricane in recorded history. It was a Category 5 storm when it hit Barbuda. Winds were clocked at a staggering 185 miles an hour. Irma would maintain that veracity for the next 37 hours, breaking a world record. Irma then began its assault on the Florida Keys, Cujo Key in particular, which is in the lower keys. Irma's winds topped out at 130 miles an hour. As a dangerous Category 4 cyclone, Irma slashed the lower and middle keys. Irma's powerful storm surge sent over 7 million people in Florida and Georgia looking for higher ground. Even the famous pink flamingos at Zoo Miami huddled from Irma's fury. But Irma made another major hurricane landfall a few hours later in southwest Florida with winds near 115 miles an hour. Hurricane Irma's large circulation helped push water out of Sarasota and Tampa Bay, leaving several marine animals, including manatees, in need of rescue. A storm surge at Virginia Key in Biscayne Bay was close to four feet above normal tides, while the Middle Keys had a storm surge well over 10 feet. Irma slammed Florida's east coast with a storm surge of three to six feet as far inland as the St. John's River in central Florida and as far north as Jacksonville, Florida in northeast Florida. Irma's death toll was at least 129 people. Amazingly, none of those deaths were from the storm surge. Six and a half million Floridians fled Irma's path and there were 77,000 people in 450 shelters statewide. Iconic photos and videos of a battered Florida Keys would just be the beginning of a very long road ahead. Now we're here in Duck Key. Behind me, you can see this marina was completely destroyed when Irma's Category 4 winds rolled on shore September 10th, 2017. Storm surge in this area was six to nine feet. Many parts of the Keys are back open for business. In fact, Key West is back to normal. But as you travel further north, where the actual eye wall came on shore in parts of Big Pine Key, Bahia Honda, and here in Marathon in Duck Key, it's not the scenario. Many of the large resorts are still repairing, trying to get open for business. Many of the homes and businesses and the Central Keys look almost exactly the same way they did the day Irma came calling. Almost frozen in time with shredded roofs, broken down walls and hurricane litter lining some parts of the Middle Keys. Forward momentum is slow and tedious, painfully so for some. Several cities in Monroe County have sent FEMA bills totaling more than $90 million but sadly, only a small percentage of those bills have been paid back. That's left several municipalities opening up lines of credit just so they can get their cities back open for business for the millions of tourists that flock to Florida's Grand Strand year after year. A couple aspects of Irma that were really unusual. One was that it was uh, what we call major hurricane, at least category three for so long, seven days. And it was category five for many of those days. And because of that, we actually had a lot more advanced notice for the state of Florida than we normally would. Well, the forecast always goes out to five days, but because everybody in Florida saw that there was a Category 5 hurricane coming and it was day after day after day, we think we had actually a better response than we would have otherwise. And that's why the numbers of fatalities in Florida were actually very small, despite having $50 billion worth of damage. 
Coming up on day three of our hurricane series, the main season, we'll take a look at the science behind tracking the storms, including El Nino, La Nina, advances in satellite technology, and how all of that plays a role in staying one step ahead of the storms. For now, I'm meteorologist Leslie Hudson reporting from East Central Florida for my radar.